It may be the largest bank robbery in history, a crime ring accused of stealing $45 million from financial institutions around the world. Only these criminals weren't wearing masks or waving guns. They used computers. The day in question was the 19th of February, 2013. Hold somewhere in the world, a global network of gang members, all working for one man, made some 36,000 ATM transactions in 24 countries, taking a whopping $40 million in cash. This is the story of Arjun Findakolu, also known as Seagate, Predator, or Orion, on the internet. This is a name that would reverberate across the globe, becoming synonymous with one of the most audacious cybercrimes in history. Probably seated in a dark and highly secure room somewhere in Turkey, Findakolu hacked into the computers of international banks, stole information, and then sent these ATM numbers to criminal gangs around the world he'd recruited online. And to make his game plan effective and truly profitable, he did something quite simple. He removed all withdrawal limits from these accounts. So, if you had $40,000 in your account, these criminals can withdraw every single penny at the ATM without having to worry about withdrawal limits. Finnicolu's gang members got to work hitting ATM machines from Tokyo to London and to New York. In three different large-scale attempts, Finnicolu successfully netted $55 million and was even brave enough to show off the money on the internet, which might have been way too conspicuous. But there's a twist. Finnicolu made an error that cost him everything. Arjun Findaloku was born in Kastamanu, Turkey in 1981. And just as most stories like this begin, he grew up poor in the most rural parts of this cultural city. His early years were hard and brutal, marked by poverty and suffering, which was made worse when his mother suffered a chronic illness and couldn't take care of him. His father, on the other hand, would have never been considered father of the year, as he was very aggressive and occasionally became violent, even hitting his son over the most trivial issues. With the backdrop of a violent father and a sick mother, the young Arjun sought to find an escape, and school soon became the medium of that escape. However, this wasn't going to last long because he dropped out of school later on, forcing him to find a job at a young age. Dying to make his mark as a young Turk in the early 90s, he got sucked into the world of computers. Everything about them, games, design software, data, codes, all appealed to him. So. He'd spend hundreds of hours staring at a computer screen, learning new things. Unsurprisingly, the internet cafe became his safe haven. A place where he could hone his skills, learn new stuff, and escape his troubled home. Soon, he became a master of computers. And this eventually helped him get computer tasks during his mandatory military service in 2001. After his military service, Arjun returned back home to face the grueling reality of Turkey's economy. Without a job and a promise of one, he traveled all the way to a city called Bodrum, where he got a job at a bar and lived with his friends for a while, before renting his own modest apartment. This could have just been a job for young Arjun, but this bar had a sizable Russian clientele, and it marked the turning point for Arjun's life. Through his relationship with some of those Russian clients, Arjun would come to discover a Russian hacking group. And we're not talking about just any average hacking group. We're talking about a highly skilled group of hackers whose major interest was, you guessed it, bank heists. They typically hacked into international bank databases, stole people's banking information, credit card details, and hacked into these accounts to steal money. Arshan initially began hanging out with this group after his work hours, and soon, he rose to become one of its key members. This not only gave him the opportunity to expand his skill set as a hacker, but also a chance to profit from illegal cyber thefts. The idea that he could easily make so much money from this skill was naturally bewildering for him, so he took it more seriously. And with each successful hack and data breach, Findakolu's reputation grew, earning him the respect and admiration of his peers, eventually forcing him to quit his day job. The Global Network As soon as Arjun became established as a hacker, he distanced himself from the Russian group, forming his own group of hackers from across the globe. By the time Arjun was done, he had created a large global network of skilled hackers with one goal, cyber theft. He spent much of his time studying bank security systems and searching for vulnerabilities he could leverage to launch something bigger and more profitable. Through his research, 
Arshin would later discover that some payment card companies were directly linked to bank accounts, and between 2010 and 2013, he successfully breached these companies, collecting the banking information of millions of people. It is very important to note that during this time, the world didn't talk about illegal hacking and cyber theft like we do today. In fact, some of the techniques employed by Arshin and his group were the first of its kind, and this made it quite hard for the authorities to keep up. Interestingly, this was the model that the team used. From Turkey, Findikolu hacked into the computers of international banks, stole account information, and then sent ATM numbers to criminal gangs around the world he'd recruited online. He also removed all withdrawal limits from the accounts. These gangs would then masterfully print out actual cards with the card details given to them, and with that, they could withdraw money from these accounts at ATMs across different countries. Smart, right? Well, it did get them thousands of dollars, and the bank had no idea what was happening. Arjun had access to information of the card companies he had breached. So as his goons went in to make withdrawals, he kept watch, while also keeping track of all the withdrawals being made, just as if he were the manager of all these banks. After these withdrawals, the criminals would take their own shares, which they didn't hesitate to flaunt, and they sent the rest of the money to Arshin through electronic transfer services like Western Union. And just like that, every penny in your account would have vanished without a trace. Now with all the skills, equipment, global network of hackers, and Arshin's reputation in the hacking world, his mind began to wander towards a heist, one that would shake the pillars of banking systems around the world. And he did, for the first time, in February 2011. No one knows when exactly these withdrawals started, but sometime in February 2011, Arshin and his group completed about 15,000 transactions in 18 countries, making a total of $10 million from the heist. The feeling they got in the aftermath of this largely successful operation must have been nothing short of fulfilling. Arjun and his team continued to live lavish lifestyles, and even flaunted them online. But 10 million was nothing to these guys, and the success of the first hit meant that the second wasn't a totally bad idea. And that was exactly what they did. The second hit happened in December 2012, and Arshin's thieves made over 5,000 transactions in 20 countries withdrawing $5 million from the bank accounts linked to the cards. But with more money came more problems. Arshin had begun to fear that these criminals would try to play a fast one on him, so he intensified his surveillance, watching every withdrawal. So, he knew how much each person was withdrawing and how much he would get from the hit. Back in Turkey, Findikolu was watching it all. He was watching so that he could tell who was withdrawing how much so that he'd know how much money he was supposed to get back. The second heist opened the eyes of the authorities to the growing influence of this criminal group, but it somehow only pushed Findelokum to want to attempt one more heist. The big score finally happened on February 19th, 2013. In a little over 10 hours, Arshin's crew made 36,000 transactions in 24 countries. For a take of $40 million in cash, ATMs were their targets as usual, but this time, they focused on New York City. This time, they were ruthless. They came and emptied these. Yes, multiple transactions. Put your card in, put your pins in, take out the limit. Put your card in, put your pin in, take out your limit. Massive. This was Arshin Fintakolu's biggest achievement, the proudest moment of his entire career, and the climax of his journey into the world of international cybercrime. He was on the top of the world, and perhaps he could have noticed one tiny loophole in the system if he looked downward. But what was Findakolu's big mistake? Right after the thieves sent most of the money back to Findakolu, they started showing off their take as usual, flaunting cash and expensive watches. But they had no idea that this was going to mark the beginning of Findakolu's downfall. Since this heist occurred within American borders, you can already guess that these guys won't let this go without a fight. The US authorities began to investigate, with the FBI leading the charge. In an interesting twist, after a series of investigations, the authorities were able to identify eight individuals connected to the withdrawals from the ATMs in New York, withdrawing up to $3 million in one day. Their end came at a mob movie staple, a New York diner, where police arrested one gang member, carrying almost $1 million. The arrest of this one man came the arrest of seven other individuals.
But this arrest might never have happened if this CCTV clip was never found. Gang members, seen here on surveillance cameras, then went to work. However, the authorities wanted the kingpin, the brain behind the entire operation. Of course, with the people they already had in custody, they were able to get them to snitch on their boss, exposing Findakolu and making him a suspect on the FBI's radar. At this point, the media had also begun talking about the heist in Turkey, and this made Findakolu realize the matter had gotten serious. Therefore, he instructed all his other colleagues to erase all information related to the heists from their computers and phones. Hoping to escape without a trace, he traveled from Turkey to Germany. But this would turn out to be a one-way journey, as he never came back. On December 19, 2013, the German authorities received a request from the United States to arrest Findakolu. Unknown to him, his movements since he stepped into Germany had been monitored. In fact, some theorize that this trip further exposed him to the US agents. So, on that cold afternoon in Germany, Findakolu was arrested at a hotel and held under custody. The US authorities applied for him to be extradited to the United States to face charges. However, Findakolu had one final trick up his sleeve. He took the authorities to court in Europe arguing it was against his human rights to extradite him to the states where he might face torture and a bunch of other things. He was able to hold them back for 18 months, but the court ruled against him, eventually allowing his extradition to Brooklyn, New York, to face charges in 2015. One of the world's most wanted cyber criminal suspects is being extradited to the U.S. for prosecution. 33-year-old Erkan Findaguklu, accused of being the mastermind behind a $55 million ATM heist, spent the last 18 months in a prison in Germany. In court, Archon pled not guilty to charges leveled against him. But even a blind man could see that the case against him was too evident to deny. So Findakolu opted for a plea deal. He was later sentenced by the U.S. District Judge Kiyu Matsumoto in Brooklyn after pleading guilty in March of 2015 to computer intrusion conspiracy and other charges. Also, he was ordered to pay back the whole $55 million, as he was indeed the mastermind behind the whole operation. But Dave Beach, who runs the Secret Service office in New York, says most of the money is yet to be recovered. As a matter of fact, the entire thing was gone, almost like it never existed. Gone. Just gone. It was cash. It's untraceable. In the courtroom, Findakolu apologized for the damage he had caused and wiped away tears as he said he had not seen his family since his arrest in Germany. I could have used my skills for good, he said. Instead, I wasted them. Well, that's it. The end of a man who conquered the banking system but couldn't shut up about it. Was he indeed a criminal genius with poor luck? or simply a mindless criminal who allowed a simple mistake to take everything from him. Share your thoughts with us in the comments section and hit that subscribe button on your way out. You know we deserve it and you really don't want to miss out on our next story. This next guy makes Findakolu look like an amateur.